Hey everyone, today we're gonna to look at server components versus client components, and why it's not always obvious if a component should be run on the server or on the client. So to get started, we're just gonna take a look at a handful of components and try to answer if they should be run on the server or on the client. And up first, we've got this users component. This component just displays a list of users. And if we look at this component, uh, the very first thing it does is it fetches its users from the database. And so this component needs to be a server component. It's querying our database, so it has to run on the server. Up next, we have uh, this component over here. This is a mouse tracking component. You can see as I move my mouse around the screen, uh, the X, Y coordinates up here for my mouse are just gonna update. And uh, if we look at how this component is written, it uses state, it has an effect, and it sets up this mouse move event handler. And so this component was made to be an interactive component that runs on the client. So one way to answer the question, is it better to run components on the server or on the client, is to just look at the component and look at the features it uses. If the component is talking to a database, well then that's better off as a server component. And if the component is being interactive and using state and effects, well, then that's better as a client component. And that's a good start to the answer the question of where components should run but it's not quite complete. And the reason it's not complete is there are components that don't fit cleanly into either of those two categories. Here, let me show you what I mean. Right here, we have this blog post and this blog post is rendered by this component over here. And the very first thing we do is we fetch this uh, blog post from the database. And once we have the blog post, we pass it to uh, this markdown component, which is gonna be responsible for turning our blog post into HTML. Uh, just so you know, these blog posts are stored as markdown in the database. So if we go ahead and log uh, blog post markdown content, you're gonna see the blog post right here. And this is just markdown, but in order to get it rendered on the screen over here, we have to convert it into HTML. And that is where this markdown component comes in. This component just takes a string of markdown content, and then it uses this parse function right here from the marked library to uh, turn that markdown content into HTML. And then once it has the HTML, it is just gonna stuff it inside this div, and that's how we're able to turn markdown into HTML. And if we look at this component and we ask ourselves, should we run this component on the server or on the client, I think you can make a pretty strong argument that this component should be run on the server. And the reason for that is, is because we are importing a markdown parser and we are parsing our markdown and turning it into HTML. And if we needed to run this on the client, then we would have to bundle up that markdown parser, ship it to the client, have the client load that JavaScript and then parse the markdown. In fact, every single client that was rendering our blog post would now be responsible for parsing its own markdown. But if we ran this component on the server, the server could parse the markdown and return this div with HTML only to the client. So we remove a burden from the client by having the server do this work. Another cool thing about running this component on the server is we could do this at build time. So when a request comes in, we could pre-compute the HTML for this blog post and just serve that up for every request. So we're only ever running the markdown once on the server and we're not having to bundle and share this markdown parsing library with every client that requests a blog post. So I think that's a point in favor of running our markdown component on the server. But uh, you'll notice over here, I've got this edit button. And when I click edit, I'm gonna be brought to this page that lets me edit this blog post. And when I type in uh, this text box, we are gonna get a live update down here. Now, one of the really cool things about this uh, preview editor is I can go ahead and I can just start adding um, links. So I can say, add a link. And uh, eventually when I get the uh, syntax for links correct, uh, the editor, the preview editor is just gonna show the correct HTML down here. So this is just constantly live updating as I type. Uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look at how this edit page is implemented. Over here, we've got uh, the blog post edit page. And this page right here, like before, goes ahead and it fetches a blog post from the database. And then it just hands it off to this blog post editor. And here we can see that we have a client component. And this client component is going to first take the blog post uh, markdown, 
put it in state, and then it's gonna render uh, this text area with the markdown content. And every time that we change the, uh, the text area, we are just gonna update that piece of React state. And then to get the preview, uh, we have our markdown component, and we are just passing our updated React state right into markdown. Let's go ahead and let's pop open markdown again. And you can see that this is the same component we were using before to render our blog posts. But now we can make the argument that this component should be run on the client. The reason for that is, is that as we type into this text area, we want a really, really fast update of our preview. Imagine if every single keystroke had to round trip back to the server and the server had to uh, regenerate the HTML and then pass it back to the client that would make our Markdown editor feel slow and laggy and not good. And so in this situation, we wanna make an argument for running the Markdown component on the client because we want the user to have really fast feedback when they're editing their blog post. And this right here is what makes a question, should components run on the server or on the client so hard to answer? You can't just look at a component in a vacuum and know if it should run on the server or the client. You have to look at the whole UI, the whole feature that you're building to know where to best run the component. And this leads to one of the things that I just love about the RSC architecture. When we write this markdown component, we are just writing a regular old markdown component. And then if we happen to use this markdown component in a server component, well, guess what? This markdown component and any dependencies it has is just going to stay on the server. React is going to run our markdown component on the server and then just output whatever markdown outputs. In this case, it will just be a div with a bunch of HTML inside of it, uh, but we don't have to worry about shipping this component to the client. However, in our blog post editor case over here, if we happen to import the markdown component in a client component, then the RSC architecture is gonna make sure that the markdown component and all of its dependencies are bundled up and sent to the client. So we get the best of both worlds here. When we're writing an interactive UI, we get markdown on the client, but when we're just writing a read-only blog post serving page, then we just keep all the markdown code on the server. And I think this is just so cool that the RSC architecture is built in a way where we don't have to think about this again we are just writing a plain old Markdown component. Now, I will say that there are a lot of components in React applications that meet this criteria. Uh, I'm gonna pu pull up this utilities file. And you can see in here, I have these two utility components, title and text. You can see that neither of these two components have server features, they're not talking to databases, and neither of these components have client features. There's no state, there's no effects, no event listeners. And so these components are usable on both the server and on the client. When they're imported by a server component, they're just gonna stay on the server and run on the server. But if they're imported in a client component, then they will automatically be bundled up, sent to the client and run on the client. And when we're writing these components, we're never really thinking about where's the best place to run them. RSC is just taking care of that for us. So I hope this video cleared up why it's not always obvious if a component should be run on the server or run on the client. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.